everybody. Um, I am Jenna Gaudio. I'm the co-president of Vidya, and I'm joined today with Kiki Palmer, as you can see. Yeah. Give it up. How y'all doing? How you doing? So Kiki Palmer is an all-around entertainer. Her first love, however, has been music. Signed very young, she continued on with her journey, and recently she has released her latest album through her own record label. She's also released her own full film that takes her through her journey of the music industry that she wrote, produced, directed, pretty much everything. <laughs> and what we want to talk about today is, <laughs> you know, when you ask a room full of people, like, what is Kiki Palmer known for? You're going to get a lot of answers, right? Because she's multifaceted. She has a lot of talents. She's made a lot of intentional creative choices that has pretty much put together the career that you know today. And so we want to get into that today, obviously focused around music because of the independent music community who is joining us mm -hmm. here today. And we want to talk about those choices that she's made. Um, so thank you very much for being here today, Kiki thank Palmer. Thank you, thank you. I love how you played with the idea of identity throughout your entire career. You play these different characters and you never really fall into this you know, rut of being one single thing. You really lean into that with this big boss release. Yes. Can you tell us, like, who is Kiki Palmer right now? Who are you identifying as? And what was it like to bring Big Boss and release that to your audience? Oh, man, I think in so many ways I am who I've always been. But the difference with, you know, the me that was signed with Atlantic when I was just uh, 12 years old doing the So Uncool album is that I am a big boss in the sense of, I'm not afraid to own all that I am, right? I think we, 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 we sometimes, we know who we are, we know what it is we wanna do and what we wanna say, but we have to go through this process of really believing that we can be all of that. Um, when I look back at the first, uh, my first album cover, it was me in all these different roles. Yeah. And I remember when I look back on that, like, you know, years, years after I had done it, I was like, oh my gosh, it was always there. I was always knowing and telling myself, but there were people that told me, oh, well, don't do that. Or, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this. Or, you know, oh, go here. Or, oh, go there. But I always knew. And so now I think it's just more so the fact that I can trust my own voice more. Um, and I'm not afraid to do it my own way. And what is that like? I mean, you have these experience being signed young yeah. and you had a team around you, which, you know, you can tell us about. But, you know, what about that experience led you to be inspired and feel ready to launch Big Boss's Entertainment mm -hmm. and go on to release under your own creative direction and with your own team and write and produce your own film? Like what 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 are those moments for you? Man, it's so many moments. Okay. And I think, I, I'll say this, I think the label system can work for some people. Obviously, we've seen it work for, for people. Maybe it's because I'm a millennial, you know what I mean? And we have other options and I didn't have to, I didn't have to go that route that I, that I do it differently. But ultimately, I realized that the label system just didn't work for me. Um, and the journey of getting to the point where I, you know, could invest in my own ideas was long. Because yeah. as you all know, it's, it's expensive to be a creative. <laughs> you got to spend, you know, the, especially when you want to do it your way, you have to pay for your own things. And so a lot of trial and error of knowing what it was to invest in my own ideas, getting the confidence to invest in my own ideas, and then using the platforms around me, right? It's like learning how to approach that because I don't have the same money that these labels have. I don't have, you know, you know, I don't have, I don't have that system in place, uh, but through slowly through digital where I, I was able to produce my own sketch series, um, produce my own dance series. I started to learn all the things I think I, you know, you, you have to learn to do it your own way. Um, and slowly but surely, I mean, it's just been trial and error. I mean, when I put out my Lauren EP first, that, that went through its own things. You know, I did a mixtape before then. I did a couple of little, you know, projects right before then. And each thing was a stepping stone to get to where I am now, where I decided to do uh, not only Big Boss the album, but Big Boss the movie. I just became, I just learned more how to continue to grow as an artist and, and the kind of artist that I wanted to be. On that journey, there's a lot of different assets that you have. You know, you've got a beautiful website, you got key TV, we got a merch drop, right? Yeah. You know? So we got all these different elements, you know, you got industry people in here and they kind of want to know how do you think about these assets? What are the most valuable things? Is there a certain order that you work in? How do you pick and choose how to put your energy? I would love to say that I'm just sitting here like this, 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 that, <laughs> go. That's just not realistic. And that's why I really say trial and error because the reality is, is like I only learned how to do the things 
I've done or that I'm currently doing through like not getting it right the first time and being like, oh damn, I should have had that or shoot, next time I'm gonna do this. And so that's why it's so important that we go um, and we don't wait on getting it all right because there is no version of getting it all right. You just slowly all of a sudden sit back and you're like, oh wow, this system is now a well-oiled machine. And that's how, I, how the process has been for me. So now with Big Boss, you know, yeah, I have Key TV and, and I have the merch and I have, but all those pieces slowly came together. Um, and I had support. I think, again, like the right team, right? I have, I've been, it had teams before or teams that labels kind of put together. Because the label kind of, how they try to run is kind of how, it's like they have a, a, a blueprint of how you uh, support an artist. And like I said, sometimes it can work. And then mm -hmm. other times you need something a little bit more unique. Every artist is different. It's like every school, you know, teaches us the same, but we all don't learn the same. And that's kind of how it is. And so for me, I learned what kind of support I needed, again, through trial and error. And now I'm in a position where I have all the right people around me that know how to help me finish out my goals. I can't, you, you can't do it alone. You need help and you need support. You need collaborators and so. That's probably a really important thing to touch on because you're looking at people in this audience that are part of an ecosystem of a team or looking for a team or starting a team. So I've heard that you have quite the team and mm -hmm. a lot of female energy, you know, leadership, yes, obviously female run. And, you know, what are the things that you looked for in building your team and what should people, maybe that you can give some advice on, like what, what are the things that kind of balance you out as a leader and a, an owner of your space? I think what balances me out as, as a leader and owner of my space is that I recognize that everybody's a leader in their own way. I think, uh, you know, it's crazy to think that, you know, there's, I mean, I say big boss, right? But I'm not the only boss. You know, I'm the big boss because I'm cutting a big check. But, <laughs> <laughs> but aside from that aspect of it, you, they're all bosses. and I, I need them all to move like that because if they're not, you know, I can't answer, every, you know, you can't answer everything, but like, yes, 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 no, no, no. You need them to have the autonomy and the understanding to also say yes or no to things on your behalf. And so I really try to encourage my team to know that I respect them in that way. And I'm looking for them to do that. I'm looking for them to be leaders. Um, so I think that's how I move. Um, and then aside from that, your the other half of your question, which was... Like, who should people be looking for? Like, how did you pick your team? Like, yes. who are the right and wrong people? Especially when you talk about the labels had a team, but it wasn't quite right for you. Yes. What was right for you? And how did you pick those people to surround you with? So I think the right people, how you identify for me, the right people are the people that see it for you. The people that are encouraging you. The people that feel like they want to help you develop your voice. They listen to you and they're pushing you to dig deeper. You know what I mean? I feel like the people that aren't for you are the ones that you guys know those people that are like, I see what you're doing, but this is what you really need to do. <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> that's like, for me, that's the first thing. When, I, when somebody, their way of getting into my corner or trying to be a part of my team is tearing down already what's been done, I know they're not the one. Yeah. Because the kind of people you need around you, especially as an artist, you're such a sensitive person as a creative, you don't need anybody that's telling you how terrible you're doing or how this wasn't the thing. You need people that are going to encourage you. And so when you go through those different uh, scenarios where this didn't go all the way you wanted it to or this didn't go, that they can continue to encourage you through that and help you learn and you guys learn together because there is no such thing as everything being perfect. Um, and so in my journey, I remember, you know, I talk about this in Big Boss, is my mom always told me, like, Kiki, you have to understand that in this industry, there are people that don't respect you and there are people that don't get it, but there are people that do. And a lot of times we go towards the people that don't because deep down, we don't believe. Yeah. And so it's also a personal thing that you have to get to the point of knowing that, hey, I have to be okay standing alone. Or have to be okay standing with me and this one other person mm -hmm. or me and this other person. And before you know it, that's how your team develops. But it starts with people that see it for you, that encourage you where you already are. And they're not sitting there trying to tear you down or tell you that you need them or this is what's going to make you pop or they have all the answers. Because that's, that's, that doesn't exist. When you are thinking about being the big boss and you obviously have this team that's looking to you for creative direction and motivation and things like that. There are these moments, obviously, of, you know, whether you're tired or overwhelmed or just, you know, have a lot going on. Uh, and even if you have, if everything is great in the world, I mean, you mentioned this in your book. I, I, you quoted somebody and you said, uh, the voices in my head are oh, not who I am. Yeah. There's obviously. I mean, it shook me up when he said that. I said, well, who the fuck are they? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, if they're not me, 
what's going on? You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was really scary. I, I, that was, I really do feel like those personal things I did, like reading those kinds of books or going on special retreats and all that kind of stuff, meditating and stuff like that, that really did help me as well. I think personal work is also like very important in terms of your creative processes and you getting to the point of being able to, um, you know, feel like you can lead even just your life. Um, but it is also challenging because it challenges everything you thought you knew. Uh, but when you realize that the voices in your head, especially the negative ones, the things that are just accumulations of other people's ideas and thoughts, it puts you more in a position of being in control and being able to know that it's your choice of what voice to follow. And if it's your choice, well, then why not follow the one that encourages you the most? Um, and, and again, that was a big part of my journey, especially with Big Boss, that I go through this process of showcasing my triggers and the beginning of me telling myself a narrative that was not serving me right and it all started with getting that first record deal with atlantic records when i was 12 years old and be, be, being told that i was a failure so young in music you're successful and everything else but that music you know <laughs> and i just well <laughs> and I, thought, I just kept telling myself that same story and doing the same things that would give me that same outcome instead of realizing that it was up to me to change that strange loop and so it was a lot of personal work that i, I had to do to get to that point as well right and there's these moments where you have this self-doubt, but I mean, as we see you as your audience, you are just shining all the time. And you're, it's the endurance to do it across all platforms. I mean, you're a social media, like completely takeover. Like I just constantly giving and giving of yourself. Thank Does you. that, that's gotta get exhausting at some it point. Is. There's gotta be, a, I mean, now, I mean, you've got so many other things in your life, right? I mean, yes. aside from the movies and the books and the, the TV host and, you know, the albums and the movies, I mean, you just, you also have a personal life, mm -hmm. but you're still giving so much on social media. And I know that's something that comes up in industry as artists is like, how do you navigate social media and you make it look so easy? Oh my so gosh, like, thank you. What have you learned, you know, that works or doesn't work? And like, how do you, do you put yourself on a schedule? Is it just, Sometimes. Does it just come to you to be able to be able to run your network and run your Instagram and TikTok and be able to just constantly put out this content that makes us feel like we're part of your journey? I think it is scheduling. It's a really big thing with scheduling. I, I schedule my life. Call it the Virgo in me. I don't know. But I really do schedule things. Um, and there were times where it did get overwhelming. It wasn't always like I started the digital thing and it made 100% sense. Even me, I was kind of like I would get overwhelmed in moments and I would tell my mom and I would call my mom and she would help me create a system. Um, so it's like, you know, one or twice out of the month, I do like a big stockpile of content. Usually those are like the series that I produce on my page. It might be my Southern Bell sketches. It might be my sketches that I just put out with my son, but I'll kind of like stockpile them. And I know that those are coming out Wednesdays and Thursdays. If I don't post anything, I know that I have those stockpiled. And so it takes pressure off of me so that I can post in the moment if I feel like it, right? right? If I feel like I want to do something extra, I can do something extra, but I know even still I'm going to have something out. And so I think it's good to to, to create a system that works for you, um, something that you know that your fans can guarantee to see, and pick one day or a few days out of the month that you can shoot it, and you just have it and put, tuck it away. I think that helps a lot. Um, and then outside of that, I mean, again, if, when it comes to my career, because I do so many different things, I, I can't stress this enough, I have a team. These people help me. I depend on these people. And I say, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to do this. I want to do that. Help me schedule it. Let's schedule it out. And my stuff is scheduled. I schedule it. On this day, I'm going to do that. On that week, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do that. And that's how I've been able to maintain. And when you talk about giving myself, um, you know, I'm honest. I, I give myself. And I think um, uh, it's important to me that people feel like they can know me because that's how I communicate ultimately what I want to communicate, which is that we all deserve to follow our dreams and get what we want. But at the end of the day, there is a, a personal part of me that, that I do keep. And that's, you know, that's just for me to know and those that really know me. Um, and the side that everyone sees, that's a, that's a side that I'm, I'm willing to share. And I'm just glad that people can connect to that. There's some, I mean, scheduling, I totally believe in scheduling. It sets you up for success, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's major. You, you put your mind at ease when you know what's yes. going on. But there's still these moments that feel like you are, like, plugged into pop culture, whether you're creating it as mm -hmm. Kiki Palmer or if you are talking about something. Like, you had this moment where you were 
talking about Taylor Swift and karma. And I sent, <laughs> I sent to my team, actually, I'm like, you need some motivation. Here's Kiki Palmer telling you that everything that's yours is coming to you. But that's like, true. it seems completely in line with what was going on in the news cycle. And it, but it seemed authentic because you are always talking about your story and your karma. And it yes. just felt like the moment was pulled out of like this magical stratosphere. Is that, was that scheduled or is that something? No, that's not scheduled. So that's what I'm saying. But, but you know what it is? This is what it is. And I remember I was talking to um, uh, Tricky Stewart, who executive produced the album. He was talking about just being in the flow of life. Everything is not going to be a genius thing. You know, nobody sits down and says, tonight I'm going to write Hit Me Baby one more time. Like it just, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. But when you are in tune in your authenticity, in yourself, you're in alignment and you're going with the flow of life, you will get those moments where it's like, oh my gosh, sorry to this man. Who knew that would be, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, I feel like that was happening in hit movie in theaters. Like, why was that? But it's just, I think, it's, I think those moments I can't explain. The only way that I can explain it is the way that I've explained everything else in this conversation, which is being in alignment with yourself, trusting your voice, being who you are. You know what I mean? That's how I've, I feel like I, I am Keegan Palmer or what I represent in any regard outside of what someone can say in terms of my talent and this and that. Yeah, that's all that. And that's all subjective. But what is 100% factual is that I'm being myself. And I think everybody can appreciate when someone's being themselves. Yeah. And so it's like, just be yourself, but but that's the thing. Finding out how to be yourself in front of the world as an artist that is the that is the task. Finding how to share that, and um, you know that's it's a personal thing. How you communicate that, and 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 all you can do is take it day by day and trial and error. I mean, in my entire career, everybody didn't always love everything I do. That just this does not happen. You know, you go through ups and downs and ebbs and flow. It flows, but what you do is you keep going. You keep learning. You keep growing. You keep evolving. And those that come with you come with you and those that don't we're never probably gonna be your fans anyway you know what I mean we can talk about people like hey like Taylor Swift or Beyonce who any of the people that we love everybody don't love them oh. but do we think that they <laughs> give a shit no <laughs> you just keep on loving who loves you and move on you know what I mean so speaking of who has been loving you I mean the big boss film takes you through who's been with you all along in those early years, the great scene with yeah. your mom, kind of talking through how it feels to be in this industry. What was that process like for you and what made you decide now is the time for me to tell my story in this theatrical way, tie in my music and release this to, to the world? I think the acceptance of my acting being a part of my music and just the entirety of what is you know, Kiki Palmer's artistry, it all aligned in me, in my self-acceptance. I think from the beginning, the label system made me feel like I had to hide a part of myself as it pertained to my music, right? I could not do music and be this kind of all around performer, even though the way that I was trained as an artist was to be kind of like a vaudevillain. Like I come from the school of Judy Garland and Sammy Davis Jr. and Mickey Rooney. That's how my mother raised me. Cause my mother came from theater and she was like, you gotta do all of it. You could do this, you could do that, you could do everything. And so that's how I was, like an all-over entertainer. And then I kind of got broken down to like these little bitty categories. Um, and so I think, again, in, in terms of me becoming the big boss and the, what this album is representing, it's representing me in, in my full acceptance of myself. And uh, with the encouragement of Billy, uh, Big Billy Clark, who is my manager, my music manager, he told me after we did the album, he said, I think you need to do something that really shows you and what makes you you. You know, you act, you tell stories, you should do something with that. And um, when I sat down, I decided to try and approach it from that POV. The story that I had to tell was the testimony of me getting to this point. And that was in no way what I had planned to do. I just, you know, when I started doing the album, I was like, I'm a big boss, this is how I feel. You know, I was coming from the place of the person that has now gone through steps one through 10. I was, I was at, I'm at 10 and I'm like, yo, blah, 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 this is the attitude. And then as we started to break down how I wanted to get people to 10, I realized I had to take them through steps one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And I was sitting there, you know, when I wrote it, I was like, damn, I had all this to say, you know? And then when I was filming the movie, it would be so many different things where I would just be crying. And I'm like, man, this is, I really went through stuff. You know, I think it's so crazy how, we are in survival mode, you know what I mean? When you're in life and trying to figure out how to get to where you want to go, <clears throat> you're just focused on surviving. And there were so many moments that I've realized since putting the movie out, since doing the movie, writing the movie, you know, promoting the movie and the album, where I sat back and said, I reframed all of these traumatic events. 
just so I could get through. Wow. You really took back ownership of them. I took back ownership. I'm like, Bob, this, this, I went through this. This happens to me. This didn't. But you know what? I'm on the other side. Yeah. And that's the thing is like when you get to the other side and you're able to see through all that, you're just like, wow. It's just such a blessing. And that's what I wanted to share with the movie um, was that it does not, it does not matter uh, where you go or where you, where, or what happened through your process of getting to where you're gonna go, you're gonna get there. And to encourage, because it's a lonely road. You know, it can be a lonely road. Yeah, I mean, especially, even if you have people that are with you, you know, you have a huge community of people that just love to see you win. You know, I'm sure that there are people that don't, but for the No, but seriously, part, the, the people, I mean, I mean, even just your mama, shit, a mother's love will take you through a lifetime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, and my mother, she loves me down. I can be <laughs> on the street, butt naked, twerking, she be like, Kiki, go harder. <laughs> you know, she really rocks with me. And even still, here I was in certain situations, isolating myself, even from her love and acceptance. And yeah. that's what can happen to you sometimes. And this is like, let's strip away the entertainer. Let's strip away whatever uh, we're trying to pursue in terms of our dream. Let's just go down to the human beings. As human beings, sometimes we can isolate ourselves so much, be so down on ourselves. Absolutely. And we don't even realize that we're the ones doing it. And that's what's kind of like, making our process that much harder for what we want to achieve. And I mean, I've gone through it. Yeah. I mean, you've gone through it like no one else has <laughs> gone through it. And I feel like you're using that to help the next generation. I mean, talk about who's rocking with you. You got Key TV and you're talking to, you're bringing more people into the fold. So yeah. yes, of course, you're releasing your projects and you're you know, being creative in your own right, but you're also kind of giving the mic and the stage to other people. Can you talk a little bit about the vision for that and yes. you know what what yeah tell us yes. about it so the vision i mean I, first of all i've been inspired by people such i don't know if you guys are familiar with brian robbins but he's you know originally tolan and robbins started out as an actor producer director i mean everything under the sun he was one of the creators of keenan and kel all that and he created awesomeness tv which i had mm -hmm. a little bit of work with and awesomeness tv was this digital platform that is an extension on youtube and facebook and they just do content and they produce stuff digitally and I remember thinking, wow, this is such an opportunity for young people to have a direct connection to the brands and partnerships that they deserve to be in connection with. Um, and specifically for me, I know as a black creative, it's really hard a lot of times for us to get seen and be at those levels. And so I was like, you know, years, many, many years later, this is now, I mean, I, I worked with him in the, when I was in my early 20s and then at 28, <clears throat> when I was doing Nope, I was thinking of, well, how can I give back? How can I take the platform that I've been given and what I've been able to learn in terms of trans, uh, you know, kind of translating th from not just traditional, but being also a content creator digitally, the, the, the kind of uh, power that that has given me, how can I take that and share with others? And so it, it was kind of like creating my own version uh, for young people and people of color with Key TV to not only give new shows and entertainment from the point of view of people that otherwise wouldn't get a chance traditionally, but also to, to democratize the entertainment industry and really let people know that there's more than one way to get through. You don't just have to go through, uh, as an artist, a label. You don't have to just go through, as an actor, an agent. You can do things digitally. You can find people like video. You can find brand partnerships. There's other avenues where people will help support your work, your vision, and your storytelling. And I know that from personal experience. I was able to restart my career through my digital investment. Um, I remember when people were like, "You, you, what are all these Southern Belle insults videos that you're doing? You need to go back to being a professional actor. This is crazy. You keep posting all these skits online. Okay, well that went from my skits online to an Amazon TV deal, an Amazon Autum, Autum, Audible, Audible, Audible. I know. Uh, Amazon, I mean, it was like, I mean, me and Amazon like this at this point. <laughs> and so it's like that doing that gave me the freedom to continue to not only invest more into my own ideas but to even be able to create a platform like ETV where I can invest in other people's ideas and so I just want people to know that in the generation that we're in now and the opportunities that we have even just from Steve Jobs creating a damn iPhone you could film a TV show you could write a story you could do a video you could do it you know there are avenues where we can really go direct to consumer and that is where the power is yeah i agree with you completely obviously video is 
built on the notion of like, we'll be your back office so that you can be a leader. Um, at Indie Week here, at Nashville, at Music Biz, there was a lot of conversations around, we have seen more women and people of color in creative and decision making Ooh, they roles. took it, they okay, said fireside. Okay, said intimate. <laughs> this is what they meant by fireside. <laughs> It's about to, I was about to get real, real right there. I'll be so, honest, I mean, when it's that fireside chat, I really did expect us to be by a fireside. <laughs> so, so did I, Kiki, so I did I. I was like, where's the, oh, they got a fire in the building. I was like, this is not, yeah. I was ready. <laughs> a little different, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the industry is changing for the good, and I think it's because there are people and resources and things being built, technology, mentors. Oh, yeah. Things like that, that people are starting to have access, and the, the, the playing field is becoming leveled. Um, you know, you getting here, you know, I feel like you've had mentors. You've talked about Ice Cube and yeah. Perry, Queen Latifah. Like, mm -hmm. now you're the mentor to this generation that's looking to you and saying, who's like, I did it. And you're giving them, like you said, these brand deals that they wouldn't have access to, this knowledge that they don't know because they're just starting out. And they're talented, but they don't have the hookup that, you know, you have at a label. Um, so yeah. so how, how do you approach being a mentor? What do you think is the most important thing when you're trying to help the next Kiki squad? It's hard, I'm still learning. I think the biggest thing is, um, I think encouraging personal autonomy. I think one of the biggest things that I want our generation to understand is that everything is a collaboration, or not even that everything is a collaboration, but everything is business. And so whenever I'm working with these creatives and I'm getting ready to do something with them, whether they're writing something or they're performing in something or whatever it is, I'm like, so this is what I can offer, this is what I can give you, and these are my hard lines. And this is what I have to do as a business. How do you feel about that? Is that something you're aligned with? If not, because I think these are the conversations that have to be had because a lot of times people just don't know. And it's like, I can't be your lawyer, right? Because that's not ethical. But what I can say is this is business. And this is, we, we, we have to find, I have to feel like I'm gaining something. You have to feel like you're gaining something. So let's figure out how to meet each other halfway. And by the way, if we can't, then we don't need to do it. And we can find maybe another fit. I think for me as a mentor, that's the biggest conversations that I try to have. And I'm still learning myself um, how to continue to be an even better mentor and, and help people along this road. But for me, it's like, I need people to understand this is a business. Yeah. I, especially artists. We got to understand it's a business yeah. because that's how we get, that's how we get tripped up. And I think a lot of times some people are trying to take advantage of us. And I think other times people are assuming that we know. Yeah. And we don't. Everybody don't know. I mean, when you sign a record deal and they give you five hundred thousand dollars, you're not thinking I gotta pr I gotta produce all my stuff with this. You're thinking I'm about to get a house. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the truth is, if you don't, you you really should invest that money into your project because you need to get that money back. Because if you don't give that money back, then they own your ass. <laughs> That's really what's going on, but no one's saying that. They're just assuming you know when you get it and, you know, you know, hey, this is what it is. So for me as a mentor, I think I just want to, I always try to make sure that they know what they're getting into with me and that, you know, we're talking about things and, I'm, and you know, before we get to the point where you feel like you're in a position that you don't want to be in. Um, and even then it's like, well, let's scrap it and let's move on. That's spoken like a brilliant businesswoman, honestly. Right. Speaking from somebody that is constantly thinking about that and <sighs> mentoring people as well, like that's exactly the way that she kind of set people up for success and let them win and give them the support that they need. And if they don't want it, that's, that's on them to decide. Yes. So speaking about business, music is an industry. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got, it's got challenges. Obviously, you have been around the block. We are where we are now. Um, we've come a long way. But what do you think are the things that the industry is still kind of facing that they need to maybe change or challenges that you think artists and label owners are up against currently? Hmm. That's a loaded question. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a million things that are changing that, or not even that are changing in terms of like uh, the systems, the, the people that are changing, but like the systems are changing. So I don't even know if I'm all the way caught up with everything. When we think about the internet, we think about social, we think about all these things. Like it's so much of it is still the wild, wild west. Yes. Um, I don't know, I just think the greatest thing that we can do is get the knowledge ourselves independently and know what we're getting into and knowing what we want out of situations. That's the best thing that we can do as independent contractors is figure out which way we want to go. Do we, do we want to get the money up front, even if that means giving up ownership? Because if that is, there's no problem with that. I mean, that's what any movie person does when they're writing a movie. They give up their IP, that, that intellectual property is no longer theirs. And we know with music, you know, as much as it hurts, the reality is, is if you want 
money up front. If you want this particular thing up front, sometimes that might be what it costs you. So know what that is going in. And if you don't want to do that way, then knows that you might not get all the immediate eyes that you want. You might not have all the money to do everything that you want to do immediately. But maybe over the longer uh, course of time that you grow, you will still maintain ownership. So I think understanding which avenues that we want to go in are, are the greatest things that we can do for ourselves and then weighing all the options that are currently available. Um, as far as what the labels need to do and all that stuff like that, they need to get ready to go out of business because it's getting scary. You know, it's getting scary for their asses. <laughs> You know, they gotta get with the pro, they gotta start treating talent more like collaborators because the kids are getting smarter. Yeah. You know, we, we are learning what to ask, when to ask, how to ask. And so with that being said, you know, these uh, deals that are coming in, unless somebody is willing to do that and they're okay with that, like certain artists have talked about, you know, certain artists, Cardi B or, or Drake or whoever, people have talked about, hey, when I went in, I knew this was what I was gonna have to give up and I was fine with it because this was more important to me. That's one thing. But if every artist isn't willing to do that, then that means it's a different route and you gotta go a different road. You gotta figure out how to make your thing happen a different way. And we're in a world where that is possible now. Yes. So there's a room full of artists that are probably looking to, th or thinking about, especially after this conversation, mm -hmm. to be their own owner of an independent label mm -hmm. or, or own their own business as an artist, because artists are a business, as mm -hmm. you can see and we've talked about today. What advice do you have for the people that are just an artist that want to be an owner of their space and potentially have their own label? I think it's great what you said. They just want to be an owner of their own space and they just want to be an artist because this is the thing. There's artists and then there's being famous. And let's be honest, most people want the latter. A lot of people say, I just want to be an artist. I just want to be, but then what that's really coded in is I want to be famous. And that don't mean the same thing. If you want to be an artist, you want to be successful doing your art, then do your art. Figure out how to do your shows. Figure out how to connect with people and connect with uh, independent programmings that allow you, to, that are supporting your independent pursuits. Because you can do it. It doesn't mean you're going to be on every magazine cover. It doesn't mean you're going to be selling out every every uh, concert. But you're going to be able to be an artist and you're probably going to be able to make a living for yourself. Um, and I think that's that's the true conversation. It's possible. We all know. You can put your stuff up. You can, uh, you know, get with someone like Vidya. You can have support in distrib distributing your stuff. Um, you can make it happen. You can connect with the, your local party promoter and say, hey, I'm trying to do a couple shows. Can you let me get half at the door? You can do all of that. And that's you owning your space. That's you uh, spearheading what it is you see for yourself. Do the research, figure out where you can go in other cities and connect shows for yourself. It's possible. Find a friend, have a friend and say, hey, can you make the call for me? Can you be my low key manager? You can figure it out. But if you if you do want popularity and you are trying to go that route, then that that requires different things, that requires publicists, that requires maybe other investments. That So I think it's like, what is it that you really want out of it? You got to be real with yourself about what it is you really want out of it and what you're looking for. That was some really great advice from Kiki Palmer, everybody. So I think that's our time right, for today. Lots to think about. Thank you very much, Kiki Palmer, for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much.